Hello, this is Christian. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install XAMPP on your Macintosh. So we're going to download the uh, XAMPP from the XAMPP website, install it, and do some configuration to run on the local host. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing is you want to go to the XAMPP website here. Uh, if you search for it or just type in apachefriends.org and you should see this uh, site that looks very similar to this one. Um, if you use Windows or Linux, you can install these. I'm using a Mac here, so basically you just download this file. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I already did. So you click and download that file. What you'll get is a uh, it's a virtual machine that will run on the Macintosh, and that has been changed uh, because of security reasons. Uh, if you go to here, I'll show you what that means. Uh, so uh, usually in the past, you're able to run a OS X native uh, file so that you can have access directly into your in your hard drive, but that has been changed, and so as you can see, this message here um, is no longer um, available. So you have to use the VM, because the dash VM is a virtual machine that run on runs on the on, on the, the server on the machine. So uh, let me just close this for now, and then once you download, you should see this file. Okay, so you have the uh, OS X here version here and then with a dash VM. So all these will be have in this VM. And the difference is because of the VM, you have a different IP address. Okay, so go ahead and click that to install. And um, so once we install that, this is not working here, but okay, so it's gonna load installer and just go through the installing process. Just basically drag here, put it into your application folder and it's going to take a few seconds to install that for us. Uh, so uh, we'll just wait until that's done. Okay, so now that's been installed. You can close this now and you can uh, remove this, eject this. You don't need that anymore. Okay, so now open your uh, application folder and you should see XAMPP in there. So in the very bottom, I have a list here. You can show icons if you want, but at the very bottom here is the XAMPP folder. Okay, so if you open it, you just double click on it and it should load XAMPP, the interface that can you can have access to those information here. So let me just minimize this for now. Okay, so just say open. So this is the interface here. You have a couple of tabs here to look at. One is the general. You will start here by turning on the, this is the virtual machine. You need to turn that on first so that all these services and network and, and volumes and so on can be um, activated. So first, just click start. And it might take a little while, maybe like a couple seconds or even a minute to uh, have it turned on. And we'll wait until that it's turned on. Then once that's on, all these uh, menus here will be available and these services also will be clickable as well and along all, with all the other uh, information there. So we just wait until that it's turned on. Okay, so it's green and you see the IP address here. My machine is 192.168.64.2. This is a local IP address. It's a private address on your local machine, um, but this is uh, attached now to a virtual machine. Okay. So if you go to the services here, you see these, th these are available. All these will be turned on when we activate them. You can start one at a time if you want to. Uh, the networking here, we need to activate this as well because now again, Macintosh needs to run on a, a secure server or a local machine to make this work. So we'll enable this in a minute. So first thing is go ahead and, <clears throat> so notice that these services will be turned on by default for some reason. I'm not sure what I did, but if they're not turned on, you can just click and start on all of them. Or you just click on go to the application and it will also turn all these on. Okay, so if it's all green, then you're great, you're done um, pretty much, right? There's nothing much to do and that's what you want. If it's red or something, then usually you have a port issue and that needs to be configured. But um, hopefully this is the case. And so if I go to application, if I click that, it's going to launch the dashboard, the XAMPP dashboard. You see that it launches the site at 192.168.64.2 slash dashboard. This is a folder and this is a PHP right here. If you don't see this, that means you don't have PHP installed and it's not properly configured. It's not installed. Okay. So again, notice the IP address is this one here. If you try to change it to localhost, okay, it, you said it, it doesn't work because we haven't configured that yet. 
So let's go back to where it was before. And then uh, later on, when we deal with databases, you're going to go to this site here called phpMyAdmin. It's just another uh, application inside the local uh, server here. So if you click on that, it's going to say access forbidden because of security uh, concerns. You need to run on a local network or you can uh, set this file and configure this file. So we're not going to do that. This is a simpler way to do it. So uh, we're going to come back and do that in a bit here. So, okay, so now you are actually in PHP mode uh, because now this is the server and uh, this is a folder you will find inside the, uh, the htdocs. So let's go back to, and let me just minimize this for now. And uh, so we have, oops, not that one. Okay, so let me just put over here on the side so we can have, you can see what's going on. So on the services, you'll see all these are turned on. Um, at the network here, notice there is a localhost 8080 port for uh, port 80, and then there's a 443 port for 443, so it's SSL, okay? And this is also for SSL, it's, it's secure, but you need to enable this to access the PHP my admin, and I'll show you that in, in a minute there. So then if you go to the, uh, back to the applications window here, right, you'll see that inside here you have a folder called XAMPP. Again, if you just double click, you, you only get this, right? If you try to access it by right clicking on it and go to the show package contents, you'll see a folder called contents inside here are some stuff that you don't want to mess with, okay? These are the uh, source files that run XAMPP. So please do not go in here and then change anything here. Okay, it's supposed to be hidden, okay? Um, but where do you access this information? Like for example, uh, this content here, where do you find it, okay? So that is by going to the volumes tab here you need to mount it okay so I'll show you here in the, uh, the this screen here as well so you can see let me um, minimize this so on the left side of this column you'll see that once I mount that volume you will see another IP address here and this is all your local drive locations for the drives so if I click mount and you see on the left side here the IP address the same IP address we see earlier is mounted here. So if you click on that one now, this is the LAMP environment. Okay, so if you click LAMP, open that file, you see a bunch of files and folders in here. Okay, and one of these you see is called the htdocs. Okay, this is where your uh, PHP file lives. Okay, it needs to be inside this folder here. But before we go in there, notice you also see a MySQL. This is for your database and PHP, the PHP source code itself, and a folder called PHP my admin. This is in a, a program that lets you, um, you know, uh, monitor or configure uh, databases. Okay, so this, all three here kind of work together. All right, so we'll access that later. So please, again, don't do anything here uh, as, unless you know what you're doing. So in the htdocs, this is the root directory of your server. As you can see, if I go back here and launch that uh, site again, um, I'm not sure where it went, but okay, over here. Okay, so again, back in the dashboard. So you see this is a dashboard folder. This is a directory. Inside here, this is the dashboard folder here, okay? So if I click the dashboard, you'll see a bunch of files. One of these is against a PHP uh, file or just HTML. There's an index HTML here. Okay, this one here is what you see over here. So if I type in index.html, you see exactly the same thing. Okay, that is this file here. Okay, if I uh, renamed it to, let's just say, index2. Okay, index2 now, to go back and to refresh it, it should fail. Okay. So that is the file you want to uh, load, okay? So in this case, is index one. I mean, just index. So I'm gonna change it back to just index. And so if you write uh, your code later on, and if you wanna use this server, you need to put your files in here, all right? <clears throat> oh, what do I do? Okay. So then if you want to run a PHP file, I'm already inside the dashboard. I'm going to get out of the dashboard, go back to the htdocs. Inside the htdocs here, say that I want to create another file. I'm just going to copy this HTTP file here and I'm going to duplicate it. Okay. And then we'll just call it um, 
uh, my PHP, put it down here. And we'll change it to um, my PHP dot PHP. I'm going to edit this file, uh, open it with the editor, text edit, and just put a very simple um, code in here. So for now, just remove everything, keep the PHP uh, tab here, tag here, and just say echo welcome to PHP. Okay, that is the PHP statement. Again, it's not case sensitive in this case and the word echo here, but usually you put all over case, just make it consistent. Okay, just save that file. You can close it and just save it, just say okay. And then now you can access this file called my PHP here in the HT docs. Again, HT docs represents this slash here. Okay, this slash here is the HT docs. And so now if I type in my PHP, that PHP, you see that this is the file that I put it here. Right, and then later on, you know, when you create a project, so you don't want to put everything here. You create a new folder, maybe call it uh, my project, okay? And then, oops, uh, my project. I already have one for some reason, and delete. Let me let me delete this. I have duplicate. Um, so I have a folder called my project, and here, okay. And then inside my project, I have a file called test PHP, for example. Okay, so I can go into uh, my project and test that PHP and here again in that test PHP file, just a test file I did earlier, they put it in here. So all your project can be here, another thing can go in here, so this is how things are laid out in a lamp. All right, so again, uh, make sure you put all your content in here in the HD docs. If you're running outside of PHP Storm, okay, we'll talk about PHP Storm in the next video, but this is for running PHP on a server, which is in this case in the Apache server. So you need to activate this and then, uh, you know, mount the volume so you can have access to your files and then uh, and so on. Okay, so to get this file, again, just click Explore. You can go over here and double click that. Or if you click Explore, it's going to open that same uh, folder I just showed you here. Okay. All right, so now back to the dashboard. Again, notice the IP address is 192.168.24.4. If you want to go and use localhost, okay, you can't in this case because uh, it's not created, it's not allowed. So to do that, you need to go into the uh, network here and change and activate this. Right now it's uh, port 8080. This is default, you can change it if you want, but I just figure, you know, leave it as is and just activate this enable it okay once it's enabled then you can go and and use that but then you make sure you use the localhost colon 8080 and that should turn it on and now you should use localhost port 8080 or you can use this ip address here it doesn't matter which one you use okay it's pointing to the same place so then now i get if i go back to the dashboard i get the same uh, information as i had earlier okay so now uh once that's activated and I can now go into PHP my admin, and as you can see, I have access to my PHP my admin, and this is now the um, interface for uh, my SQL database, as you can see here. Okay, so later on, when you create the databases, this is what you'll be using to do that. So I hope this is helpful, and uh, if you have any questions, again, please let me know. Just remember that you have to turn this on every time, and then um, uh, you know activate this. Uh, database later on if you use we're going to use databases you need to turn this on and then just make sure you turn this on as well if you want to use the local host otherwise use this IP address here okay